We do this as a sideline tackle, and then if we want it to be an open field tackle, we just move it out in the middle. But um, it's about seven yard width right here. Um, what this is, as you're going to see, there's going to be this is the this cone for the running back. This cone is the width of where they're going to run through the defensive players over here, and excuse me, the offensive players got to run through this three yard gap. The defensive player is going to run, and he's going to work to the inside shoulder of this opening and run the kid out of bounds if he has to, but he's not going to let him pass the, the goal line. The coach is going to flare the ball out into the opening right here, and the, and the uh, running back, just to show you again, the running back is working through the hole, and the defensive player is working inside out. What he can't do, as you'll see on this one, he can't give him a cutback. So as he comes, he doesn't want to get head up on this kid right here. He wants to stay on the inside shoulder and, again, use the sideline as a defender. And that's why we call it a, a sideline tackle. Sideline tackling video. Again, you know, you out there, he, wants to, he did a good job of staying inside, and we want to work him inside out. And these are, again, our freshmen and sophomores, so some of it looks good and some of it doesn't look good. But a good opportunity. Work inside out, run him out of bounds, and that's a, that's a pretty good one. Again, we tell them this doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be effective. Okay, that kid gives him a two-way cut, and that's why he leaves. Two-way meaning he gets head up on him right there. That's why he's not successful. We want to stay inside out. You know, doesn't do a bad job, but he wants to work inside out. We want to run. You know, there, that's a, a good job. Okay, and if we wanted to turn this into an open field tackle, we would just square that box off to about a seven by seven. And then it's just, you know, get him down however you can. See, that kid, obviously, one, he doesn't want to hit. But two, he, gave, he got dead in the middle of that box. So he's probably not going to be successful. But great drill. Um, it takes about five to eight minutes. But great drill for your freshman and sophomore to do every day. And then when we do our uh, varsity kids, we don't always go to the ground later in the season. Early on, obviously, we do during camp. But we try to get them not to twist and turn and all that kind of stuff to keep the kids from getting hurt. Near hand bat emphasizes getting your players to understand that the defense can have a disruptive effect on the quarterback by deflecting passes at the line of Defensive backs, okay, will come off the edge, corner blitz or safety blitz. Safeties can also come up the middle depending on your scheme. Okay, want to match the throwing hand and match the quarterback's eyes is designed to teach defenders to go get the ball at the highest point when tipped in the air so we can secure an interception for our defense. It's an important coaching point that defenders realize they are now ball carriers who can be stripped of the ball. So it's important once they secure the ball to hold it high and tight. We want the defender to go get the ball at its highest point with his arms extended. When defender catches the ball, defender should tuck ball away before his two feet hit the ground. We call this tuck before two. It's important when the partners are together in tip drill that the first participant tips the ball as high as he can in the air. The catcher goes and gets the ball at the highest point like number 28 here in your screen is doing. Okay, and then he wants to pull it down and put it in a high and tight ball carrier position and secure it before his two feet hit the ground. Tuck before two. Good job by participant number one getting the ball high. The catcher does not extend his arms though in this case to go get the ball at the highest point. If an offensive player was there going for the same ball, he'd probably take it away from him. Ball's high, great job here by the defender going and get it at the highest point. And then as you can see, a quick tuck before two. A quick tuck, he's tucking it away. Before. Our final drill in ball disruption circuit A is what we call second man in. Second man in emphasizes when the ball carrier has been hit and is controlled by the tackler, we want the next man involved to tackle the ball and try to rip it out or punch it out. Coach will direct the ball carrier to the direction left or right. Tackler will perform the angle tackle. On contact, defender who is to side of the ball carrier will now enter the drill and perform a strip attempt and rip or punch the ball out. Angle tackle by number 42 Number 46 comes right off the hash. 
with the strip of tent. Angle tackle with a club and base by number 25. On contact, number one comes off the dot with the strip of tent. Strip. So we will just literally circle the guys up and talk about how to strip a football at the first station. And then we'll run a little strip drill where each partner up and can work it. First thing we want to do is secure the tackle with our off hand that we're not going to be stripping with. We get that hand and we go right over the shoulder pads, reach down and try to get our fingers right underneath that breastplate and secure the tackle with our off hand. Now with our hand that's going to be doing the stripping, if he's got his elbow in, we'll come over the top and we will try to get our hands on his hands or his wrist or his fingertips and peel that thing, prying the ball loose. Peel those fingertips back. Feel, peel the hand, that thumb, whatever you can get a hold of, because it's not an exact science when you're running down the field chasing somebody or in the mosh pit of, uh, of tacklers in the middle of the, of the field. But you want to pry his hand off that ball somehow and let that thing fall where it may. So we teach him to peel the fingers back, peel the wrist off, whichever you can get a hold of. Okay, the art of the strip. A lot of people teach different techniques right here. Number one thing we want to teach when we teach the strip is to secure the tackle. Okay, we want to get our arm over the shoulder, and for the purpose of the drill, we want to grab that breastplate and practice. Okay, it's not a perfect situation in the game, but that's what we're aiming for right there. You can secure that tackle with the first hand that gets to the ball here. With the second hand, we're reaching over the top and trying to peel the fingers, peel the fingers right off that ball. If he can peel those fingers back, Again, it loosens up the ball and take it with him. Very rarely is he going to reach in there and be able to take that ball from the ball carrier, from the running back or receiver. But if he tries to get the hand off the ball, it frees it up so we can have a chance to make a play. Now, if his elbow's in, that's the technique we want to use. Come over the top, Marcus. Come over the top and peel the fingers back. Good. All right. Now, if the ball, if his elbow is out, if the ball carrier's elbow is out, now that changes things. Okay, if we read, we know that ball carrier carries that thing with his elbow out, we want to come through and punch that ball out, secure the tackle and punch, get that ball up and out so we can create a turnover for the defense. Once that ball's on the ground, we will also, after they partner up and learn how to strip, we'll line them up in a drill uh, at the next station. Just put everybody in a line in front of the coach, and one at a time, they'll run at the coach, the coach will roll the ball out or maybe set the ball on the ground. Again, give them different looks. Give them different kinds of uh, balls that they have to catch. Throw it at an angle to the left, to the right. Uh, give them some pop-ups. Again, you want to keep a good tempo for this drill where they're scooping it up, handing it back to the coach, and the next guy goes. When they do scoop, don't poke at the football. Attack it. Don't be hesitant. And get your hips down and behind the football. If you have to slide to the left or the right, do so. Just like an infielder fielding a ground ball, get nice and low, receive that ball, keep your pinkies together, and scoop it like you would scoop some ice cream out of a carton, okay? Don't poke at it like you got your salad fork trying to get some lettuce, okay? We believe, and I've heard it preached both ways, that some coaches teach the, the, the poke, and when they poke, they go down with their thumbs together and press off that ball picking it up. But we want to score when we get it. And if we miss on the scoop, at least we're knocking it in the right direction. So that's why we believe in the scoop rather than the poke, rather than the pressing off the ball technique. So if you can't scoop it after you try it a couple times, we will go over with our guys how to cradle around that football to secure it so we get it back for our offense because we couldn't pick it up off the ground. So you definitely there's time and, and places to cradle that football and make sure you secure it, such as an onside kick or whatnot. Okay, once we have the ball out and it's on the ground, we want to practice scooping that thing up. We teach a scoop, we want to get our pinkies together, get down low, get your hips behind that ball like a shortstop or field of ground ball, and scoop at that thing, and if we miss it, at least we're knocking it in the direction we want to go, okay? Now, if we've tried to scoop it once or twice, or depending on the situation of the game, we will try to cradle it and get on that football. For this drill right here, we're going to have a coach rolling the ball out, okay, and our line of scoopers right here. This is a high-tempo drill, but we're going to kind of go through a three-quarter sp speed right here. Coach is going to roll the ball, he's going to attack the ball, keep his hips low, pinkies together, scoop at it, and secure it. Make sure the coaching point right there, secure that football. Don't give it back to the offense once they give it up. Okay, again, a little faster. Boom, scoop it, good. 
Always knocking it forward. Scoop it like a spoon. Scoop it like you're getting some ice cream. Don't poke at it like a fork or it's a salad, okay? Scoop it up, all right? And then the second progression of this is for the coach to change up where that ball's gonna go. Is it gonna go over there? Left, right, high bounce, low bounce. So he's gonna change it up on him here. Boom, moves it out to the left. Scoop and score. Again, and when he got right here, he wanted to get his hips behind that ball, scoop it in the direction that he wanted to score in. Once they understand how to strip, how to scoop, the next progression is to work a strip, scoop, and score drill. So we'll get them in a single file line in groups of three. The first guy in the line is the ball carrier. Go ahead and put that ball in his right hand to start the drill. The first defender is our stripper. He's going to be getting the ball out. The third guy in the line, he'll start a little farther back. He will be a, he our second defender, and he is going to be the one that's going to be scooping the ball and scoring. Okay, so that's the setup. What will happen is the ball carrier will take off. The first defender will chase him down from behind, secure the tackle, reach over the top if his elbow is in, and peel those, pry his hand off that ball to get the ball out. And you notice I said elbow in. He's going over the top. If his elbow were to be out and we've got a nice little pocket, we're going to try to secure the tackle and punch that ball up and out if he gives us that. But most ball carriers are taught to keep that thing high and tight, and so we're going for the strip in this drill. But work both. Once that ball's out, that's where we want to really coach him up on what to do. The biggest uh, threat to getting the ball back for the offense is the ball carrier, the man who dropped the ball. So if we know we got other people around us and we do in this drill, we want to go ahead and start blocking that guy and keep him from getting to the football. Okay? So our stripper will now become a blocker, keeping the ball carrier from the football while our scooper runs in scoops the ball, secures the ball so he doesn't give it back, changes directions if he has to, and scores, okay? Um, again, rip or punch the ball out, work both. Okay, strip, scoop, and score. Now we're gonna put it all together right here with a ball carrier, our strip guy, and our scooper, okay? The ball carrier's gonna take off, go ahead and walk it. Then the scoop, uh, stripper's gonna come up behind him, secure the tackle, Get his arm over the top, get the ball out. Somehow, some way, if his elbow's out, punch it. If it's in, we want to strip it out. Now, important coaching point here is the guy who strips must now become a blocker, okay? Become a blocker and keep him from getting to the ball. He's the biggest threat. As he's doing that, the scooper comes in, picks it up, and makes sure he returns it to where we want to go, and that's the other team's end zone, all right? Let's do it three-quarter speed real quick. Again, let the ball carry get about a foot out ahead. Then comes the stripper guy, going to knock that ball out somehow, some way, okay, and tell your ball carrier, hold it in there tight, but for the purpose of the drill, we do want to turn it over, and then uh, make sure we go to the blocking section is very important. Here we go. Three-quarter speed, ready, go. Get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out, block, 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 strip, scoop and score. Good. And that's strip, scoop, and score. Tip drill 2.0. Now, we've all seen the tip drill where you have a single file line and the coach will throw the ball, first guy tips, second guy will intercept. And we will work that drill. Um, two, tip drill 2.0, we just uh, thought it eliminated a lot of bad throws by the coach and a lot of bad tips by the tipper. So we'll get that tipper, we'll just get one stationary guy five yards from the coach to ensure a nice sound throw right where we want it by the coach and the tipper can make sure he's getting a good tip. Now on the tip, we don't want to volley that thing up. We don't want to set it. If you've got an opportunity to set a ball, then, then you should catch it, okay? So we want it to barely skim the top of his hands, just creating enough of a deflection to where the defensive back has to change directions, okay? This is a pure reactionary drill for the defensive back. We're working eyes, we're working hands, we're working his, his body control, okay? So he's gonna sprint at the tipper who's stationary as he takes off, the coach is going to throw it, the ball's tipped, the defensive back adjusts, and make the interception. Okay? You can do this from straight behind the tipper with the defensive back, or you could work it from a 90-degree um, lateral entry into the tipper. Uh, that's a, a little more difficult for, for the guys to grasp sometimes, but again, it just gives them another angle of them chasing something laterally, just a different angle to tip the ball. Now, that's what we do with the defensive backs. Now, if the linebackers rotate to our station, Okay, we'll make it more position specific. 
will start the linebackers on a 45 degree drop and have to break on a window. Uh, in this diagram, he's breaking at a, a 45 degree angle to uh, intercept in a window. Maybe he was dropping to the curl and uh, his, his route came back inside and he was adjusting to it so he's opening his hips and coming back inside. Anyway, you can work it however you want. But we'll again have a stationary tipper five yards from the coach. That ensures a nice good throw. And again, change up your tempo on the throw. Some fast, some slow. And then the linebacker will be coming across and uh, adjust to the tip, intercept it, secure it, and score. And you can set up two cones to give them some aiming points. But again, be real creative in this drill and put them in whatever coverage your team plays. Put them in those type of scenarios to receive a tip ball. Okay, this is tip drill 2.0. Now the original tip drill, you have the coach and then you have a line of uh, defensive backs, linebackers, or whatever you're using for the drill, running at the coach two at a time, first guy tipping, second guy catching. Well, to eliminate some wasted reps now, we want to put the tipper, go ahead and station him in the middle, station the coach five yards away, especially for those coaches that don't have very good arms or, or uh, aren't as accurate as they'd like to be, to ensure that we get a good throw to tip and that we get a good tip that barely, you want that ball to come and just barely touch your fingers tip guy. You want it to barely tip that thing, knock it offline just enough to where that defensive back has to make a reaction here. Okay, so we're going to go through it one time. We got our coach, we got our tipper, and we got our catcher. All right, let's try it one time. Give it a go. Again, and at full speed, again, we'll start cranking them out. And again, we can go a little bit harder on that throw. Good, good, good. And again, we don't want to set it, Tipper, one more time. We don't want to set that thing up there and make it nice and easy. In a perfect world, that'd be a great play. But if he could set it like that, we'd like for him to catch it. Barely tip it here. Good. Again, secure that ball, finish the play. Tip drill 2.0. All right, still working tip drill here. But again, we like to make it as position specific as possible. So instead of the linebacker coming from behind the defender, or the, the wide receiver, we're going to have him coming and closing that window, maybe in his own coverage or whatnot, or a receiver coming across the middle on the underneath route, okay? So we're going to station the tipper here, the coach there, and then the linebacker is going to be coming in from an angle, closing that window. And again, we want a good, nice tip, so we got a small distance here. Again, just barely adjust that thing. Don't set it like a volleyball. Barely adjust that thing so he can make a tip. Defender, you want to make your approach about five yards behind the tip guy so you can adjust one way or another. Let's try it one time. Ready, go. Good, 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 good. Just want to adjust the ball in the air. And that's still tip drill 2.0. Again, make it position specific. Change up your angle. That's just one way to do it. And then uh, you'll get more use out of that tip drill. Earlier we talked about how important it is to uh, inspire your DBs to play aggressively. So the shoot to hip drill will partner up uh, two, two defenders. Again, these can be linebackers or defensive backs. One is stationary, the other is behind him. He will sprint at the wide receiver that's stationary, shoot the hip, get low, rip tight, turn his shoulders, and come out on the other side of the receiver as the ball's being thrown to the receiver, get his hands to replace the receiver's hands. Again, this is just simulating us breaking on a hitch, us breaking on a route, where we have a chance to jump in front of the receiver and make a play and create a turnover. Um, Get on them about fitting tight. Get on them about not making a whole lot of contact and running through the back of the receiver. A lot of times you've seen this play happen, and the defender runs right up the back, and they call pass interference because he gets there before the ball gets to the receiver. So get, get on them by getting skinny, getting by, and getting their eyes up and their hands up to replace the area in which that ball is going to be delivered. All right, as we talked about earlier, one of the fundamental keys to creating turnovers for your team would be Playing aggressive as a defensive back, you know, being aggressive, being able to shoot in there and trusting and have confidence in yourself that you can steal that ball away from a receiver. This is a shoot to hip drill, okay? The first guy we have lined up here, he'll be our receiver for the drill. And there's our defensive back behind him. But again, you can use linebackers. Everybody needs to practice this during the tackling circuit, okay? Walk through it one time. The defender's going to run at the back of the wide receiver. The coach is going to throw the ball. The receiver is going to shoot the hip. He's going to get low. Scrape low to the ground, come right underneath the armpit of the wide receiver, and finish right in front of him with his hands up and ready. Okay, let's do it full speed. Again, we want to fit tight to the receiver. We want to get low and come right up and almost replace his hands with our body. 
Try it one time. Here we go. Set, go. Good. And that's the shoot to hip drill. Again, always encouraging your defensive backs to be aggressive when that ball's in the air. That's how you're going to create turnover. Another aggressive defensive back drill we want to work is the lean and undercut drill. Any time, any, anybody who's in man coverage could be a backer, could be a defensive back. We're going to teach them how to the lean and undercut through this drill. And again, and we'll work it into our turnover circuit. We'll start off a wide receiver and a defensive back or a wide receiver and a defender side by side. The receiver will take off jogging, and at about five or six yards, the receiver will then lean into the defender and break the opposite direction. All we're teaching our guys here is to feel what that feels like in a game. Because most of the time those receivers are taught to plant inside, go outside, or to push off. Not taught to push off, but to use different tools to get open. So, and they feel that lean. They know that this guy's breaking in the opposite direction, that we can now, boom, jump that run route and run the route form. So it's lean and undercut. When the defensive back or defender feels that lean, feels that pressure, feels that push, he knows now he needs to sink his hips, get ready to change direction, and his eyes should already be low and see that step come inside and us break. we want to break and run the route for him here. Um, you don't want to use an arm bar for this drill or you don't want to hold. You want to play with your feet in this drill. Again, any, anything that you might use in man coverage, any tricks of the trade you might use, again, we want to cover with our feet in this drill. Eyes low, focused on the hips. It's not a race. We're working for good habits here, good technique on finishing off a lean and undercut situation. Okay, this is the lean and undercut drill. Again, working on being aggressive uh, in coverage with our coverage guys and being able to steal a pick somewhere and create another turnover for your team. For this drill, you're going to have a wide receiver right here. Defensive back, linebacker, doesn't matter, defender right here. Okay, they're going to take off jogging. Guys, walk it. Okay, about five yards into it, the wide receiver is going to lean into the defender. Now, what that means for the defender is he's making a move out. He leans in, our rule is he leans in, he's going out, so I want to jump it and try to create a turnover for my team, okay? One more time, guys, three-quarter speed, let's show them how we do it here. Again, five yards into it, receiver's going to lean in, break out, defender undercut the throw. Good. All right, one more time, full speed, guys. Ready? And that's the lean and undercut drill. Again, just working on reading that receiver, sinks his hips or leans into you, and we want to undercut the route and create a turnover for our defense. The plant and drive. Okay, we did the W drill earlier where they always knew it was a right foot plant or always knew it was a left foot plant. This drill, it's going to be a left or right foot plant, again, based off the quarterback's shoulder turn. We've got two pop-ups here. We put a defensive back right in the middle. And it's just the W drill that we did before, but it's either going to go to the left or to the right based on the quarterback. So now you're building those reaction skills. You've taught them how to pedal. You've taught them how to plant and drive, um, plant the right foot, left foot. Now it's reacting and going left or right without wasted movement. So I'm going to pedal them, and then I'm going to turn. They're going to plant and drive. And again, the eyes. Eyes to the man, then to the ball. Come in front and make a play on the ball. Next defensive back will, will step in. Drive, or pedal, plant and drive. Pretty good job here with the feet. Form of the T with his feet, pretty tight at the top. Then look back once he gets in position to touch that receiver. Nice job here with the footwork. Plant and drive, accelerate, and then eyes transition from the man to the ball. But this is a great drill uh, to teach reaction and uh, to really help with, uh, you know, either going left foot plant or right foot plant based on either a receiver or a quarterback. Now, again, we worked on this uh, drill, W drill, the side run, and either breaking on a curl or breaking on a comeback. Uh, again, it's all based off the quarterback here. So, we, again, we've transitioned, just adding another element to the drill. You can see here, the first guy broke on a comeback. This guy now is breaking on a curl. Again, it's important that you emphasize the finish of the drill. Go attack the ball.
but you always keep the hips uh, down, the knees bent, good pad level throughout the whole drill. And you can do a lot of different things with these pop-ups, whether it's the plant and drive at a 45.